Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about a very important topic in Unit 2, Basic Structure of a Computer. Okay. And we are going to see the bus structure in this particular unit. Okay. We are going to see how the bus structure works. What are the different bus structure? We will also see uh, different types of bus structure. That is single bus structure, multi bus structure and all those things. Okay. In previous video, we have seen the operational concepts of the computer, right? And today we are going to see the bus structure, okay? So, we will see what is bus structure first, okay? What is the importance of bus? We have already seen the operational concepts, right? You can understand that uh, for the normal execution of instruction, right? A uh, lot of information is stored from memory to processor, right? And processor to ALU and all those things, correct? Right, not only data, not only the address, in that lot of signals is involved, lot of control signals is involved, right, and lot of data is involved, everything is involved, correct, right, so in order to coordinate all these systems, right, all this uh, peripheral, CPU, memory, processor, and all those things, correct, right, uh, you need a, a set of connections, right, which it is used to carry all the information needed, Right. So, this particular group of connection is called as bus. Okay. And usually there are three types of buses. One is data bus, address bus and control bus. From the name itself, we can understand data bus is something where uh, it will carry data related information and address related information will be carried out by address bus. And control bus is nothing but controls control. The complete operation inside the computer is carried out uh, the control signals. It's been carried out by the control bus. Okay. And uh, as I said, you can see it is a uh, group of wires. Address bus is a group of wires which carries address information. Correct? Right? And data bus is carries data. Right? That is from processor to peripherals and vice versa. Right? And similarly, control bus is a group of wires which carries control signals from processor to peripherals. Okay. And uh, in order to represent the address line. Right? Address line can be represented like this, to the power of x and n, where n is the number of location and x is nothing but the address line, okay, right, the number of locations is n, right, and the x is nothing but the number of address lines, okay, by using the address line, how many locations can be accessed, okay, that is, that what, that's what it means, okay, and we can see this is the complete, uh, uh, bus information inside the computer. You can see control bus, address line, and as well as data line, that is bus, control bus, address bus, data bus. Each and everything is connected to processor, memory, input, output device, everything. Okay. And you know that what is the uh, information that is memory and processor will fetch the instruction and data. Correct? Right. So all the instructions and data can be carried out through address line and control and data line. Right. And whenever the IO device is used to uh, fetch data, that is given input to input output device is used to uh, transfer information and as well as to see the result, correct? It will give the input to the input device and through output device will get the output, correct? For output device you have printer, correct? So all these devices has to work synchronously in a right timing manner, correct? So the control signals is very very important. Those control signals is carried out by the control bus. Okay, and you can see the numerous operation which is carried out by the control bus, right? The control lines which carries a lot of control signals. You can see memory writing operation. You already know what is memory writing operation. Last class we have seen what is uh, the basic operation concepts. You know what is memory write operation and what is memory read operation. And you can see input output read and input output write operation. And for transfer ACK, bus request, bus, re bus grant, interrupt request, interrupt ACK. All these operations, all these control signals are carried out by the control bus. Okay, so all these buses are very, very important. Okay, and this bus structure can be of different types, like single bus structure or a double bus structure like that. Okay, so depending upon the applications we can use, uh, but normally uh, in a bus structure, like a, a single bus can be handled by two devices at a time. Right, and only one particular data transfer can be taken place. Okay, so single bus architecture is from the name itself you can understand there will be a common bus right, right. for uh, interconnecting all the 
all the uh, devices input memory and processes all the peripherals right so single bus architecture is very very simple right so all the information will be carried out uh, through this particular single bus structure okay now you want to understand what why uh, this bus structure is important and why the single bus structure is uh, very simple and all those things correct so first you want to understand why this bus structure is important okay now i'll give you an example right now uh, consider this output device as printer output device as printer okay so if it is single bus it can able to transfer only one particular uh, information at a time correct one particular data at a time right now uh, you understand why the bus structure is very very important right so uh, that is each and every input device and as well as memory output device works at a different speed for example input device keyboard and as well as mouse works at a different speed keyboard will work at a mechanical speed that is uh, the external devices right and similarly uh, the processor and the memory will work in an electronic speed it will work in an electronic speed and printer once again it will be very slow that is uh, the difference in speed will be very slow right so now you want to understand the control unit the control unit which controls all the operation has to have a common transfer mechanism right because this works at different speed this works at different speed the output device works at different speed right so appo kandipa or common transfer irundha da in the speed max panni correct ana execution nadakka mudiyum correct ah so that is why bus structure is very very important okay and for this common transfer mechanism what we can do is we can use buffer registers buffer registers use pannalam right ah so buffer register na enna appdi paathinga appadina buffer information sa time correct pandradhukaga information ah or buffer register or register la store pandradhu correct ah and to be very frank you can take this particular example printer eduthuko ipo normally computer connect pannirukka right computer it is connected to a printer like this bear with my diagram just understand the concept ஒரு பிரிண்டர்ல கனெக்ட் பண்ணிருக்கீங்க அப்படி பார்த்தீனா யூ перफॉर्म सम पर्टिकुलर ऑपरेशन ஒரு வேர்ட்ல இந்த டாக்குமெண்ட் கிரியேட் பண்ணிட்டே எல்லாமே பண்ணி முடிச்சிட்டு யூ ஹவ் சேவ் தி டாக்குமெண்ட் ரைட் சோ இன் ஆர்டர் டு டேக் தி பிரிண்ட் அவுட் வாட் யூ will do is you will you will select the file and click print right so once it is given print now you got to understand that uh, now the computer has to communicate with the printer okay and computer the processor will work at a different speed and printer will work at a different speed okay right now what is the importance of bus structure here it uses the buffer register now what it will do is it will send the information to the printer buffer you can always see that by right? going taking printer uh, if you go and see the printer option you can see what are the different prints which is uh, going to be uh, printed next right now what are the uh, next prints which is available right the like continuation you print kuduthu irukka rendu dagum moonu dagum kuduthu irukka na you can see what are the other inspections other uh, next file that is going to print right so that particular information is called buffer register is send pandra information a buffer register la irukum one by one a irukum and the printer will print one by one right even though the printer is capable of printing 10000 lines per minute it is capable of uh, printing 10000 lines per minute it is a mechanical speed okay but practically uh, what the speed will be completely different okay it is very fast so now this buffer is very very important so one by one this particular data will be printed out correct right okay. now understand that if there is so bus structure if bus structure irundana da ing buffer irukke ing buffer la nama store pandrom right ah store pannanal enna aagudhu appadina printer if once it is sent to the printer the information buffer ku vandha odane the memory and the processor is free here adhu enna poi pannanum avasiyam illa correct ah printer buffer ku vandhuchu ipo printer ku buffer ku da information buffer la information print pannite irukum fine by this time it sends the print uh, information to the printer the memory and the processor can can be concentrated for the next process okay adha vela enna mo adha paakalam for example ipo neeye vandu or document irukke or 10 pages irukke correct ah 10 pages or pdf document open panirukke right adha nee print pandrana as soon as you give print that is okay that is done in your computer right print kodutane printer automatically print vandide irukum once you given print what you can do is you can go ahead and do some other operation in your word file open panni onala work panna mudiyum correct ah right it means the processor and memory is free now it is ready for the next instruction that is only because of the buffer register buffer register illa appadina 
இப்ப வந்து டைரக்ட்லி கனெக்ட் பண்ணது பிரிண்டர் வாட் வில் ஹேப்பன் இஸ் இந்த பிரிண்டர் பிரிண்ட் பண்ணி முடிக்கிற வரைக்கும் தி பிராசஸர் அண்ட் மெமரி கேனாட் டு எனிதிங் இட் ஹஸ் டு வெயிட் ஒரு ஒரு பிரிண்ட் வந்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் அந்த 20 பேजेस பிரிண்ட் முடிச்சதுக்கு அப்புறம் தான் என்ன பண்ண முடியும் அடுத்த டாக்குக்கு போக முடியும் ரைட்டா டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் இஸ் தி இம்பார்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் பஃபர் ஓகே so that is why a transfer mechanism is needed and all this information is carried out by the control signals okay and uh, one drawback of bus structure enna appdi pathinga appadina single bus structure enna appdi pathinga only one particular operation can be done right oru oru nerathla oru particular no adhu it is a time consuming process okay and there are the different bus structures as well for example uh, two bus structure two bus structure enna appdi pathinga it can perform two distinct functions right it can perform two distinct functions one is for fetching the instruction and another one is executing that instruction okay so that uh, operational speed will be increased also but cost also will be increased also right and you can see this is the diagram like uh, for input output device that is io bus input output bus which is uh, which which is used for fetching the instruction right information fetch pandra thing right and you can see this is memory bus the second bus which is performs the execution okay va right so by the inner function inner function up to this is two bus structure okay and similarly there can be a multi uh, bus structure where you have address bus data bus control bus and all those things okay even if it performs very fast all this executions can be done uh, simultaneously right but the cost will be very high okay so in the main and the path we are talking about we are seeing what is bus structure right what are the importance of bus structure edukaga bus structure theva right and then we have seen what are the different bus structure single bus structure na ena two bus structure na ena idella paathirukom correct puriya right hope you understand the concept correct thank you students thank you students thank you for watching kandipa indha video ungalku ellarku romba useful ah irukum nambra subscribe passionate professor and keep learning thank you very much